Woo, woo, woo. Hey, how's it going? Lee Hayward here with another live video Q&A. And the way these video chats work is I'm going to be hanging out here for the next little while, answering any questions that you may have when it comes to building muscle, losing fat, getting yourself in shape. So if you have any specific challenges with regards to your workouts, your nutrition, and all that good stuff, let me know in the chat window there, and I'll do the best that I can to help you out during our video chat today. And I also have something really cool to share as well, because after this video chat, I'm going to be doing a live follow-along home workout routine over on the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook page. So if you're not following me over there, head on over to the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook page. I'll actually post the link to it in our video chat there, uh, because this is something that I did back, oh, back when coronavirus hit. I did these follow-along home workouts, and they were a huge hit. A lot of people really enjoyed them, and we're kind of going into a phase of second lockdown again for many places, right? I, I know it's, it's, it's hit or miss because like all, like some places are in lockdown, some places the gyms are closed, some places the gyms are open. It's all a, a big old mess. It really is. And even if the gyms are open, I know a lot of people are hesitant to go to the gym because of the whole situation. Either you just don't want to risk it, you don't want the hassle of it or whatever, and, and I can appreciate that. So what I'm going to be doing now is a series of follow-along home workouts that you can do from home with minimal equipment. So if you haven't already done so, if you're not following me over on the Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook page, then head on over there. It, uh, again, I'm, I'm going to get the link for you here in just a second. Now I'll type it into our video chat machine there. It is, if, if you just go to Facebook and type in Lee Hayward, Total Fitness Bodybuilding, you'll find it. But where is it too? Second, now I'm going to type it right into our chat window. Da, 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 da. There we go. Boom. That's my Facebook page. You can go there, like that, connect with me there. If, if again, that's that's somewhere where you can contact me. If you have any questions, you want to reach out to me personally, you can contact me through Facebook. I'm more active on Facebook than I am uh, on YouTube because Facebook, I like it because it's actually a two-way conversation. YouTube, with the exception of these video chats, it's a one-way conversation. You know, I mean, I know you can post comments, but it's not the same as Facebook where you can actually interact and private message and all that cool stuff. So if, if you want to reach out to me, uh, the easiest way to do so is through Facebook. That is my uh, my main social media platform of choice. And you can reach out to me right through that Total Fitness Bodybuilding Facebook page. And that's where I'm going to be doing the live follow along workouts. So, uh, yeah, if, if you're up for a workout, head on over there. And I also have a bunch of replays from the previous time that I ran these uh, whole uh, follow along workouts back when this whole thing started like there's over 30 plus I don't know exactly how many but there's there's 30 plus full follow along workouts and they're not workout demos is me actually going through the workout in real time and you, like you you start the same time I start and we go through it together set for set exercise for exercise boom 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 go through it in real time and uh, it's just a cool way to kind of have that a little bit of accountability because you can follow along with it and do it in real time and gives you a little bit of extra motivation because I know sometimes we need that little tiny bit of motivation even if it's virtual motivation it's better than nothing it kind of like makes it feel like you're not doing it on your own and uh, I have a lot of positive feedback when I did these before and I'm going to be doing them again now uh, on a regular basis leading up until New Year's this is going to be something that I'm going to do a regular basis these follow along home workouts so again follow me over there if you haven't already done so and for those of you who are tuning in live now let me know let me know where you're tuning in from See, we got Eagle Eye John joining in. We got Jesse. We got Cyber Foz. We've got Cool One. Jake is joining in. Awesome. Welcome, guys. Uh, I'm assuming this is coming through loud and clear. <laughs> I, 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 no, nobody's commented yet, so I'm assuming it's coming through loud and clear. I usually, before I start getting into talking and blah, 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 going into it, I usually I would do a little mic video audio check, but I'm sure it's all coming through clear. Abby's joining in. Hey, how's it going? Welcome to the chat today. Let me know if you are a regular to the chat. Like, I see a lot of regular names there, guys who I've seen before. But if you are brand new to this video chat, then, hey, let me know. Type into the comment section down there. Like, just say the letter N if you are new. The letter N. And if you are a regular, you tune in these on a regular basis, type in the letter R. Let me know. I just I want to get that feedback, kind of get an idea of who am I talking to? Am I talking to, am I, am I preaching to the choir or am I preaching to new people who, who are joining in? Ah, we got a few new people joining in. Awesome. Welcome. I see a couple news. I see a couple regulars. Well, again, let me just kind of, for those of you who are new, 
I, I want to kind of like clarify like what this is all about. And if I'm not sure how familiar you are with, with me and my content and stuff like that, but I've been online a long time. Like I, I literally started making YouTube videos back when YouTube started in 2006. Uh, I've even had my website on the go before then. Like my first website I launched back in 1997, my very first website. So, uh, and that was a, a, a bodybuilding website. And, and the cool story, I'll just give you a little quick abbreviated version. It was a school project. Like I was going to, to college and uh, our, our, we had a computer studies course where we had to develop our own web page. And of course, me being a fitness, bodybuilding and fitness nut at the time, uh, I made a bodybuilding website. And that was my school project. And I actually put that website online back in 1997. And that's how this whole thing kind of evolved. It was just a school project. That's how this all started. And back then, the internet was so new because you have to realize like, in 1996 is when the internet became legal as we know it, meaning it was, it was legal to do business and, and, and basically have a public network. Before then, it was just a government network. But in 96, it became legal to have this public network. And uh, there, there was nothing. Like, I remember the first time I logged on to the internet uh, in the mid-90s and, and typed in, like, I went to a search engine. The search engine at the time was Yahoo. There was no Google back then, right? There was no YouTube. There was no Google. There was but Yahoo was the big search engine. So I went to Yahoo and I typed in bodybuilding and nothing came up like nothing. Can you, you imagine going to like, go, go to a search engine today and type in bodybuilding and you'll get like 10 billion results. I went there in 1997, typed in bodybuilding and nothing. I heard crickets chirping. <laughs> like there, there, all that came up was there was a couple of things like saying definitions, like, Hey, bodybuilding is, is lifting weights to build your muscles. And, and like, that's all it was. There was no blogs, there was no workouts, there was no articles and videos and like all the bombardment of information overload that we have today. There was nothing. So back then, when I put up my first bodybuilding website, like anybody who worked out and anybody who had an internet connection, they were finding out about this, this, who's this Lee Hayward kid who's got the bodybuilding website? And I used to, it was crazy. Like I go to the gym or uh, even in public and people say, hey, you're that guy on the internet with the website, aren't you? And I say, yeah, that's me. <laughs> And now, of course, there's you know a gazillion people on the internet with websites, but it's just interesting to see how it came from. I mean, that's that's I mean, it's it's, it's fun to see where it came from, but that's how it evolved. And throughout the years, I've just been like basically mirroring my own fitness journey on the internet through my website. So, I mean, back then it was all about bodybuilding and bulking up and powerlifting training and all that kind of stuff that I was into at the time. Now, as I've evolved and matured, it's more about how to be fit and healthy over forty. Right. That's what I'm focusing on now, how to build muscle, stay lean and stay healthy over 40 muscle after 40. That's what I really want to focus on. And when I'm doing like coaching and helping guys, that's who I target. It's, it's guys who I can relate to. Right. People who are going through the same struggles as me, because that's who I can really connect with. So when I'm doing these video chats like that's who I, I'm visualizing on the other end of the camera here, I'm on the other end of the computer, I'm visualizing someone who's in a very similar situation, you know, like a guy probably in your 40s or older, and you're looking to lose the gut, build muscle, get back in shape, and just get control over your health and fitness. Like, that's who I'm talking to. Now, I know we get people from all walks of life, some young, some old, some ladies on board and all that stuff, and that's cool as well. Like, I don't discriminate. I'm not going to say, hey, I'm not going to help you because you're not a man over 40, but generally speaking, that's who I gear my fitness content to is the muscle after 40 market, and again... Just want to kind of share that little uh, introduction, like it's a crash course, like a sh virtual introduction for those of you who are new to the video chat. But again, welcome. Glad to have you tuning in. All right, I'm gonna slam back. I'm get, I'm, I'm I'm having an energy drink here now because I want to get a little bit of caffeine kick in me because right after this video chat, I'm gonna be doing a home workout, so I need to get myself a little bit of a caffeine kick in the arse and pick me up. I don't drink energy drinks very often, but I feel like I need one today. So it's a sugar-free monster energy drink, Ultra Sunrise. And I'm not sponsored by Monster. It's just one that I happen to like. All right, so let's jump in. Let's see if there's any questions, comments, feedback, blah, 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 all that good stuff. Um, hi, Lee. You're not on Facebook. Um, I just came, came to say thanks for your help. Yeah, I, I am on Facebook. Yes, just, I posted a link there. It's Total Fitness Bodybuilding, if you do a search. Uh, Jesse saying, Hey, how's it going? Hey, Jesse. Jesse's a regular. 
Um, who else? We got cool one. Can I follow you on Twitter? I do have a Twitter account, but I, I'll be totally honest. I'm not active on Twitter. I think the way my Twitter account is set up, it just basically mirrors what I post on Facebook. But like, there's so many freaking social media platforms these days. It can be mind boggling. I mean, like you'd need to have like a dozen clones to really keep up on them all. So my main ones that I focus on Facebook and then YouTube. Those are pretty much it. And, of course, good old-fashioned email. <laughs> that's where I'm to most of the time. I mean, yes, I do have a Twitter. Yes, I do have an Instagram. But that's not my primary platforms. My big ones, again, Facebook and uh, and YouTube, obviously. Like, here we are. <laughs> but if, if you want to connect with me and, like, actually chat and kind of, like, whatever, Facebook is the best way to do it. I mean, on there on a regular basis. Not only that, I have my private coaching group on Facebook as well. Like, several people who are tuned into this now are, are students of mine. And uh, we have a private members only coaching group where we focus on, you know, guys who are going through the muscle after 40 blueprint. And uh, th that's a cool little place where we kind of connect, share workouts, hold each other accountable and basically just, you know, help do what what needed <laughs> to get people in shape. So, I mean, that's where I, I do a lot of coaching there through that private group. And if you're interested in on joining that private co coaching group, just let me know and uh, we can have a chat about it. But it's a, it's a small supportive group. Uh, mostly guys in their 30s, 40s, 50s, and we even have some in their 60s, might be even some in their 70s, I'm not sure, but that's the general range, right? So it's a more mature group, uh, you know, guys, f family men who are just in there, lose the gut, build muscle, get back in shape, and basically take care of themselves. That's that's the dedicated focus of the group. Uh, who else we got there? We have Jake joining in. Can you make more cooking and meal prep videos? Absolutely. That is something that I'm definitely going to get into doing more so. Uh, I, I've been a bit lazy when it comes to a lot of cooking and meal prep because what I've been doing a lot for my own personal meals is, is I get I, I do the same thing over and over again. And it's like I've posted up like a full day of eating and a couple of my sample videos. But, man, I, I'm going to tell you right now, like a lot of my go to meals, they're not that sexy. <laughs> they really aren't like I'll give you some examples of some of my go-to meals that I eat on a regular basis like I, I go to uh, Costco and I buy these big bags of pre-made salad I buy the pre-grilled chicken breasts you know already ready for you so I mean like that, that's kind of like my meal delivery service if you will I just go and I stock up on that stuff because it's ready to go like if I want to have a meal let's say like a chicken salad for lunch which is what I had today like I can whip that up in like 60 seconds, boom, meal done. All right. It's so simple, so easy. And I mean, it's, it's lean, it's healthy, it's, it's nutritious and it's filling and satisfying. Uh, another simple meals, like, I mean, high protein blender smoothies, high protein, uh, ice cream recipe uh, that I make up like, which is protein powder and egg whites, uh, blend that up, add in some frozen berries. I mean, again, high protein, high nutrient, low calorie, very filling. I mean, that's something that I have on a daily basis. Uh, high protein oatmeal. I mean, that's a, a common breakfast meal that I'll have. Uh, dinner is when it gets creative, and and thankfully I got a beautiful wife out there who's making dinner. <laughs> so so she. But it's it's always a, pr a protein, a starchy carbohydrate, and a vegetable. Like that's the, that's the ratio. Like whenever I sit down to the table and and have a meal, it's always I think of the plate in thirds. I want to have one third of the plate is protein, one third of the plate is vegetables, and one third of the plate is going to be some sort of starchy carbohydrate. So it might be fish, it might be rice, and it might be steamed vegetables. It might be steak, it might be sweet potato, and it might be whatever, like like broccoli, asparagus, carrots, what like whatever type of vegetable. A lot of times we'll stir fry vegetables. Uh, you know that's that's one thing. I also have a lot of like meat and vegetable stir fries on top of rice or on top of quinoa, something like that. But it's always protein, veggies, complex carbs. Protein, veggies, complex carbs. That's the usually dinner meals. And they'll vary. We'll have that with the family. And again, my wife is the one who usually makes those. So I'm kind of lazy lately when it comes to the meals. <laughs> right? That's why I haven't been really making a whole lot of cooking and meal prep videos. Because I'm just kind of taking the easy way out. But I'm, it still works. Like That's my fast food. And that's the cool thing about it. Like This day and age... There's no excuse not to eat healthy. There's really not. Like, you can have healthy fast food. Like, those options that I just mentioned here, like, those, they are just as quick and just as easy as if it would be for me to eat junk food. So, like, you can't use time as an excuse anymore. 
Like I can go and, and, and buy a healthy meal just as quick and easy as I can buy a fast food meal. All right. I can go and prepare something out in the kitchen and whip up a, a nice healthy meal just as fast as I can whip up an unhealthy meal, sometimes even faster. Right. So, I mean, you can't use time as an excuse anymore. And we're so fortunate to have that. But yeah, I, I will definitely get into making some more cooking videos. I have to kind of get back to Jake's question there. <laughs> Uh, what else we got there? Abby's joining in from Italy. Welcome. We have Cool One from Chicago. Welcome. Demi is joining in. Demi's a regular. Uh, Jose joining in from New York. Question on tricep exercises. Does a full lockout have to be done or a soft lockout in order to fully contract the triceps? Ah, that's a good one. Now he wants to be safe. Um, it really depends on the exercise. Now, there are certain exercises that you do need to lock out your arms to get a full um, contraction in the triceps. And uh, let me just kind of backtrack a little bit. When it comes to most of your major muscle groups, you can work them in what's known as positions of flexion. P-O-F, positions of flexion. There's not plenty of fish, it's positions of flexion. Uh, this is a, a, a common, well... <sighs> This is a, a great style of training for bodybuilding purposes because it works the muscles through all the different ranges of motion. We have a mid-range, we have a fully stretched, and we have a peak contraction. So let me just give you a couple examples that you can relate to. Let's just focus on chest, for example, because, I mean, every, you know, chest is a, a common exercise or common body part that most guys can relate to. A bench press is a mid-range exercise. When you're doing a bench press, or and when I say bench press, it could be a flat barbell, incline dumbbell, chest press machine, Smith machine, even a push-up for that matter, like any type of pressing chest exercise. What happens is most of the tension is in the mid-range. It's a mid-range exercise. So when you lock out at the top, you actually get a little rest. And when you're down all the way in the bottom, you don't really get a full stretch. All the tension is in that mid-range right? And it's usually a big compound exercise. Most mid-range exercises are big compound exercises. A fully stretched exercise would be an example of uh, a dumbbell fly. So with the dumbbell fly, uh, when you extend your arms out, you feel a good stretch in the chest in the bottom, but then as you bring it up, you, you kind of lose the tension. And in fact, when you bring it all the way up to the top in the dumbbell fly, you actually get a little rest at the top. Like the, your, your pecs are hardly under any tension at all at the top of the movement but they're under max tension when they're fully stretched in the bottom. So that's an example of a fully stretched move. Uh, the example now of a fully peak contracted exercise would be something like a pec deck fly or a cable crossover fly, where you have to fight to hold those handles together at the top. Like you can't lock it out and rest at the top like, like you can with locking out a bench press or locking out a dumbbell fly with a cable crossover or a pec deck. That's where it's the hardest. You have to fight to hold those handles together and it's, it's, it gets easier throughout the other ranges of motion. So you have mid-range, fully stretched, peak contraction. I have a whole video playlist series on my main channel explaining this and I even got sample workouts there. Now, when it comes to triceps, and, and again, this, this applies to all your major muscle groups, but when it comes to triceps specifically, because that is your question, if you're doing a peak contraction exercise, you have to lock it out in order to get the maximum benefit of that exercise. So an example of a peak contraction tricep exercise would be like a tricep kickback, like a dumbbell kickback, for example. You have to lock that out in order to get uh, the max contraction and get the max benefit. Another example could be like a, a tricep rope pushdown, right? Or, or any really tricep pushdown variation. You have to lock it out to really get the maximum benefit. And, and personally, I like to do a full range of motion when I'm doing tricep exercises. But if you're doing like a, a fully stretched move, for example, like if you're doing some sort of uh, skull crusher variation or overhead tricep extension variation, you could get away without doing a full lockout because the majority of the tension is in that fully stretched uh, position and not in the top. So like if we're, if we're doing overhead dumbbell extensions, right down here, this where the triceps are stretched out in the bottom, this is where they're working. Once I get up to the top, I, I can lock it out. So you're not really getting max contraction at the top. So in that, it's that instance, doing the full lockout, you know, re really doesn't add anything to the exercise. There's nothing wrong with doing it, but if you left out the lockout and just did, uh, say, like a three-quarter range of motion rep, you would get just as much benefit from it because, again, the majority of the tension is in the stretch. 
So mid range and stretch moves, you can get away without locking them out. But if you're doing a fully uh, peak contraction exercise, you need to lock it out. So hopefully that makes sense. If, if, if a bit of that went over your head, <laughs> watch my video playlist about uh, positions of flexion. And, and all you have to do is go to my main YouTube channel, uh, open up the playlist tab and scroll down through there and you will see positions of flexion. I've got a whole video series in there. Or even if you, if you just want to take the easy way out, go on YouTube and search, search Lee Hayward positions of flexion uh, and you'll find it. Or you can contact me and I'll send you the videos and we can chat about it more. But uh, hopefully that makes sense. It depends on the exercise. We have Yash joining in. Come back from chest tear. Any suggestions? Ouch. It depends on, on what kind of chest tear that is. Like if it's a full on pec tear, tendon detached, your pec is deformed and, you know, it's bruised and battered and, you, like you, yeah, you, if 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 it's a full on pec tear, that's that's doctor territory. Like you need to get that surgically reattached and, and blah blah blah. Like there, it's not going to get better on its own. If it's just a pull or a strain, you can rehab from that. And I actually have a video talking about rehabbing from chest pulls. I've pulled my chest muscles and strained the tendons and stuff like that several times over the years. Usually from bench pressing too heavy. That's that's like the the. 99% of the time, if someone's pulling or straining or hurting their pec, it's because they're trying to bench press too much weight. Uh, and that's that's usually the root cause. And I've got some videos uh, explaining that. Let me just give you the... I'll tell you, I'll tell you the one exactly to search for here now. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. I'll go to YouTube. Lee Hayward. Um... Again, if, if you do a search for like Lee Hayward, uh, pec strain, something like that, it should come up. Pec strain. Let me just see if it comes up there in search. Yeah, okay. Uh, the title of the video is called Pull Chest Muscle Rehab Exercises to Speed Recovery. I'm actually going to type the link right into our chat window there for you so you can go check that out. Check it out after the video chat. You know, stay here. I got some good stuff to share. But um, I'm just going to type in pull chest muscle video boom boom all right go check that out that's a, a video that will show you how you can do some rehab exercises at home if it's just a pull or a strain if it's not an actual full-on tendon detachment tear and how you're going to know is a, a, a strain or a pull it's going to hurt but it's not going to be deformed like if, if you tear a pec like just do google image search torn pec and you will see like the, the chest looks screwed up. It really does. Like it, it's not a full square pec anymore. It's it's deformed. It's probably like front, right in the pec shoulder tie-in area. It's like let go and you'll see this big gap. And, and you know, it, it's 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 just a mess. It really is. The only way to fix that is through through surgery. You know, I've you got to get that surgically reattached again and stuff like that. It's not something that's just going to heal up on its own. In fact, any tendon detachment, tendons do not just heal up on their own. If it's muscle fiber tears, they can heal up on their own, thankfully. And the way the way it works is like if, if it's just the fibers itself, then the fibers can re rebuild and reattach. But tendons can't. The only way you're going to put tendons back together is through surgery. Hopefully that makes sense. We got Omar joining in from California. How are you doing down there? I guess I'm just curious. Like for those of you watching now, are, are the gyms open? Are you in lockdown? Like, what's what's the situation in your local area? Because I mean, I, I'm I'm chatting with a lot of my coaching students, and I got, got a couple guys in California and who are in lockdown. I know just recently, Alberta, Canada went into lockdown, so like all the gyms are shut down again. I got a few coaching students who are in Alberta. Uh, it's I think in Quebec they're in lockdown as well. Like, well, when I say lockdown, I mean the gyms are closed, right? <laughs> like. <laughs> As, as muscle head meatheads and, and fitness like, enthusiasts, like, we don't care about anything else. Like, is the gym open? Okay, that's all I care about, right? You know, the, is the restaurant open? Oh, I could care less, right? Are the bars open? I could care less. But man, I, don't shut down the gym, right? <laughs> like, that, like, that's all I worry about. But I'm just curious. Like, let me know. Are the gyms open or not? Let's just see. Uh, gym's open in Houston. We've got... Uh, PA is, uh, I guess that's Pennsylvania is in lockdown. Oh, shit. 
Where else are you? Like, who's open? Who's like, we got a bunch of people tuning in live. Let me know. Yeah, Pennsylvania's in lockdown. I'm sorry to hear that, man. I've got a couple coaching students in Pennsylvania, but they work out in their own home gym, so it's not an issue for those guys. Yeah, so that's why I want to do more of these follow along home workouts because I know, like, a lot of places, it's like Europe was in lockdown. I don't know if they still are or not. If we got anybody over in Europe, over in the UK, like, are you in lockdown? Are you back open? What's on the go? Uh, Johnny saying my gym on Long Island's reopened. Family won't let me go. I, I can respect that. I mean, like, if, if I lived in a major city where there was like a, a shit ton of cases of COVID on a regular basis, I would be hesitant to go. Like where I live in Newfoundland, with we got we got a small population, and we're not a major travel hub. Like we're an island out in the North Atlantic. Like the only people who come here are people who live here. I mean, of course, there are some people travel for business, but it's it's not like a major city. It's not like you know Toronto or Los Angeles or New York or you know the big hubs where you're getting thousands and thousands of people coming and going all the time. Like Newfoundland is very remote, and We've got, like, I, I probably count on my fingers and toes the number of cases of coronavirus we have. And, and I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I, like, we're in somewhere around 20 cases-ish. It, it fluctuates day to day because you get some people recover and then someone else will bring it in. And, and it's always someone bringing it in traveling, right? Like, it, there's no there's no coronavirus in Newfoundland. It's just people who travel in here bring it in with them, right? So, I mean, if, if and we kind of have this bubble where we're trying to, force people to self-isolate when they come into the province but of course you got some idiots who don't self-isolate anyway enough enough of me ranting on that but let's just but where i live all i'm getting at is is like there's there's only a handful of cases so i feel pretty safe going out in public you know like going to the gym and all that stuff because i mean it's it's such a small numbers but if i live somewhere where there was like thousands of cases popping up day in day out like like i think alberta recently i've seen on the news they were getting like 1800 cases a day which is like holy like that's just mind-boggling i'd be scared to go to the gym too i'd be i'd be scared of going out in public so yeah I, I can appreciate that uh who else we got there the same ricky saying they're back open in the uk uh, war, war group saying Southern California gym is open. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, Pogi boots saying, uh, PEI. I, th I think they're open. Okay. Ireland is open. T -t 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 Johnny saying my home, <laughs> my home gym is open. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta love home gyms, right? Orange County's bad with uh, COVID. Uh, okay. People saying UK is open. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, it's, but again, it's it's a it's a messed up situation for sure. I mean, uh, but anyway, one thing is open. Like I say, home gyms are open. All right, let's get back to the questions here. Now, where was I? I lost my place now. Uh, um, okay, where was I too? Okay, I missed my spot there. Omar is joining in from California. We got Ralph joining in. Uh, Warg Group, Warg, Warg, Warg Pup. I think that's how I pronounce your name. Says Lee, hope you're doing well during the pandemic. Does walking slash jogging at an incline top level of a treadmill help to build muscle, say, at the end of a leg training? All right. Mm. Yes and no. All right. And let me, let me elaborate that. If, if you do no exercise whatsoever, like you take someone who's totally sedentary, they don't do diddly squat. If they start walking slash jogging, which I would always recommend you walk before you run, but let's just say you even just start doing that. That is going to be some level of muscle stimulation for someone who is sedentary. So yeah, they could literally build muscle by walking. If you take someone who's sedentary and not active at all. But if you are active and you're going to the gym and you're, you're working out and you're lifting weights and, and you, you have a decent level of, of muscle mass already, no, you're not going to build more muscle from walking. You, you could help improve the conditioning. You could help burn the body fat. You could improve your muscular endurance. But like nobody's going to build big, massive quads walking on a treadmill. It's not going to happen, right? It's, no, you're not. I mean, if you were running sprints or something like that or something more intense, then yeah, that, that could have a hypertrophy response. But low intensity, long duration cardio is not a hypertrophy exercise. It's a fat burning. It's an endurance. It's a cardio conditioning exercise. You're not going to build muscle from it. 
Does that mean I don't recommend it? Heck no. I mean, I, I do recommend it. <laughs> I love doing cardio. I mean, me personally, I, I do cardio almost every day, whether it's bike riding, whether it's take my dog for a walk, or if the weather sucks, I'll go to the gym and I do cardio there. Cardio is phenomenal for burning calories, burning body fat. It helps to keep your heart healthy. It's a great stress relief. I, I just enjoy it, especially doing cardio outdoors. Like for me, bike riding is my all-time favorite. I absolutely love it. And this year, I've done a fair bit of bike riding. I've done probably about 4,000 kilometers on my bicycle this year, or bicycles, because I've got a, several. <laughs> I've got a road, uh, well, I've got a gravel bike, and, and I just recently got a fat bike. So, and I also have an old mountain bike as well, which I haven't been using mostly because I've been doing either gravel bikes or, or the fat bike. But I've got about 4,000 kilometers racked up uh, this year on, on bicycle, and I love it. It's it's absolutely a blast. It's it's my favorite form of exercise, hands down. I mean, honestly, at this stage of the game, if I had to choose between weight training and cycling, I would choose cycling. One because it's good for the heart health. It's it's fun. I enjoy it. It's good for burning body fat and keep me lean, and it's a great form of stress relief. Like I feel good when I get out there on the bike. It just like releases the natural endorphins. I'm out in nature. I'm getting the fresh air, the sunshine. I mean, I just I just love it. Uh, so if like at the stage I'm at right now, if I had to choose weight training or biking, I, I'd, I'd do biking because it's more fun and it kind of fits in line with, with my goals at this stage. But I like doing both. I like to do what I refer to as my yin and yang training system. So I do weight training one day and then I do cardio the next weight training one day, cardio the next. So I, I alternate it. So I get in three weight training workouts and a minimum uh, of three cardio sessions, even though very often I'll, I'll try and do some sort of cardio every day in addition to the weight training. So, so for example, if I do a weight training workout, I'm probably not going to go on a big like two hour bike ride that same day, but I might take my dog for a walk or I might do like half hour cardio uh, on the treadmill or elliptical or something like that. Uh, but then on my off days from weight training, that's when like I'll do a big cardio session. I mean, it could be like two hour bike ride or, or more. Like sometimes it's, it's bigger. Like the, the biggest bike ride I've did so far this year was like five hour bike ride, like rode over it was 110 kilometers in a single ride. Um, loved it. You know, full, full day excursion basically. Right. So, I mean, sometimes I'll go and do a big old extreme ride like that, but that's few and far between. Like most of the time it's hour, two hours of, of cycling at a time. That's usually what I shoot for. But to get back to your question, <laughs> You're not building muscle at that. No, the weight training, the strength training is, is what's actually building the muscle. The cardio is conditioning, endurance, and fat loss. Uh, who's Sam's joining in? How are you doing? Sorry, I have one quick question before my phone runs out of charge. What's better, lift heavy half rep or fast rep or mid weight but slow motion rep? Let me read that again. What's better, lift a heavy half a rep or a fast rep or mid-weight or slow motion rep? You know what? All of the above. There, there's a time and a place for all of those. If, if you're just looking for the cookie cutter, like one size fits all answer, do full range of motion, keep the weight under control and make sure that you lift within your means. Like that's the one size fits all cookie cutter answer. But there are time and places for all the different rep ranges. Like if you are an athlete or if you are a power lifter, there's time for doing those explosive reps. Uh, if, if you're training a specific portion of an exercise, there's times for doing partial reps. Um, it, again, and, and for super slow motion, like, hey, if you're trying to uh, isolate or get more mind muscle connection, then you can do slow motion reps. Like it, everything has its place. It's like me opening up a toolbox and saying all the different tools. Okay, I got a hammer, I got a screwdriver, I got a saw, right? I got a drill. Um, you know, what's the best tool? Well, the best tool depends on the job, right? If I'm trying to hammer a nail, I'm not going to use a saw, right? If I'm trying to put in a screw, I'm not going to use a, 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 a pair of pliers, right? I'm going to use a screwdriver or a drill. Like, that's what I'm getting at. Like, people say, well, what's better, this or that? It depends on what you're using it for, Right. And, and this applies to, to all your exercise. Like some people say, you know, hey, should I do high reps or low reps? Should I do, you know, um, heavy or light? Should I do high intensity or low intensity? Like it depends. <laughs> it really depends. And, and that's where having a coach can help you because having a coach can, like, we can discuss your situation. We can discuss what it is you're trying to achieve and then focus on a specific action plan that's right for you. 
see the, the problem out there is like, like you have a legitimate question here. And then if you start putting this out to the internet, you know, like just say you're, you type it into Google, you type it into forums or social media, you're just start asking fitness influencers. A lot of times they're going to give you the answer that would apply for them or their ideal person. Like if, if you ask this to a power lifter, they're going to give you a response that's applicable to power lifters. If you ask this to a bodybuilder, they're going to give you a response that's applicable to bodybuilders. If you ask this to, like, it depends who you're asking and, it, and you're going to get different answers depending on that. But what you need to focus on is does it apply for you and your situation? Like that's the big thing here. It does it apply for you. And, and I'm going to like give you like a, an insight here. The tr like true wisdom is not accumulation. Like true wisdom is not trying to learn more and more. Like so many people, like I want to learn more workouts, more exercises, more, more meals, more this, more, more, more. And they're, they're in there searching all the time and they're watching YouTube videos and they're following influencers and they're just trying to get more and more and more information. True wisdom is elimination. It's like cutting out all the crap and BS that you don't need and focusing on the few things that you do. The few things that are actually going to make a difference for you and your situation. And that's, that's where true wisdom comes in. So like a lot of times when I'm coaching people and like, they'll come to me and they'll say all these questions, should I be doing this? And should I be doing that? And this, this guy says, do this. And that guy says that's wrong. And then someone else says something different. And I'm like, man, like, let's just cut out the shit. What is it you want to focus on? Where are you to? Like, what's your situation? And let's put it together a plan for you based on your goals, your situation, your schedule, all that kind of stuff right now. And, and, and not focus on, Oh, Joe Blow fitness model is doing this, and then so and so power lifter is doing that, and and somebody else at my gym said to do this. Like, no, like that that's great for them. Let them do their thing. Let's focus on you, <laughs> right? And, and once you start doing that, it simplifies the whole process. It's almost like a, a relief, like a weight lifted off your shoulder. Like, oh, I don't need to focus on all that crap anymore. I just need to focus on these few things, and I can actually make results. Like. What's your goal? Is your goal to be the most knowledgeable encyclopedia of fitness information? Or is your goal to actually be in shape and healthy and live a long life and realize your own fitness and fat loss goals? Like, what is it? That's what you need to focus on. But again, by back to your question, all of the above, it depends on you, right? So you can lift heavy, you can do partials, you can do explosive reps, you can do slow motion reps. It depends on you and where you want to, what it is you want to focus on. All right. Where are we to? <laughs> um, Moses posted a, a, a question and a, and a tip there. Most appreciated for your support. I'm going to answer this one. See, it came through. Uh, it sent me $4.99, right? I could buy myself a coffee with that. Thank you. Uh, it says, Lee, been following you for a while now. Appreciate the videos and your perspective. What do you recommend to increase power? I am a boxer. All right. This is a perfect, perfect question. Kind of falls in line with what I was just talking about. You are an athlete. You are a boxer. You have specific goals. This is where those explosive fast reps can come into play. Because, look, like, does a boxer throw a punch slow and controlled? Like, look out. I'm going to throw a jab. You don't see it coming. Oh, here comes a hook. Whoa. No, boxers, boom, boom, boom. Right? Fast, explosive. That's where these type of training comes into play. You need to be fast. You need to be explosive. Speed. That's what you want to focus on. Uh, th like, there's different ways that you can do this with your training. More plyometric type work. Uh, like, box jumps, uh, explosive push-ups, these type of things. I mean, that's stuff that really help to uh, build up that speed and explosiveness. Uh, using rubber resistance bands is another great way that you can do this. Uh, you know, because the cool thing with bands is you can be very fast and explosive with the bands and they actually have the accommodating resistance, meaning that the further you stretch the band, the more tension it builds. So it accommodates your body's natural strength curve. Uh, the only when I would recommend some of the more slower controlled movements and stuff like that is when you're working on stabilization exercises and trying to balance out your body. So, for example, like if, if you're trying to isolate things like shoulder mobility, rear delt work and, and stuff like that which is very important for boxers because, you know, your, your front delts and, and all that getting a lot of overwork, you need to balance it out, work in the rear delts, upper back, try and keep everything in proportion. This is where you want to do probably some more of that slower controlled time under tension work to help balance out the, the, all the muscles of your body so that you don't develop imbalances. Because one of the biggest problems I see with a lot of athletes is they run into the repetitive movement patterns of 
the the movements they do for their sport, they those movements become very strong and they become overdeveloped in those muscles. And then the ones that are not getting uh, worked in their sport uh, become very weak. So like I, I see this all the time, like where I've gotten involved with the with cycling over the last year, for example. Like guys might be strong in the legs and they might have great cardiovascular, but they suck monkey balls when it comes to strength. Like I've seen professional, well, like ex-professional cyclists, like guys who, um, who are still phenomenal shape cardiovascular, right? I mean, they, they're lean, they're, they're fit. They got cardio where they can ride like a, you know, ride without getting winded, whatever, but they can't even pump out like 25 pushups. Like, you know, like they, they, they're strong in certain areas, but then terrible in other areas. And, and you want to kind of balance that out. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that you have to be, you know, an athlete and perfect in all areas, but you don't want to have these glaring weaknesses, especially as a boxer, because a boxer, you got to have a combination of cardio. You got to have a combination of strength, speed, stamina, like it's, it's mobility. There's so many things you got to focus on. Like you need well-rounded fitness there. But when it comes to increasing your power, it, it's not just like one rep max bench press stuff. Now that can help. Don't get me wrong. You know, heavy power training can help. But I'd focus more on the explosive, being fast, power with speed. That's what you want as a boxer, right? That's what's really going to make a big difference. And like I say, the combination of the strength training workouts, along with practicing, you know, your, your punching, your bag work, your drills, shadow boxing, all that kind of stuff, your sparring, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's, it's it really comes down to a combination of all of it. But focus primarily on practicing your sport supplemented with the strength training um that would be the way i would go about it if i was was in your situation because it's this this actual application and putting it to use in your sport is what's going to take that strength and carry it over like simply just building muscle and not carrying it over to being functional muscle functional for your sport and your specific use uh that's not really going to help so speed and explosiveness that's what you need as a boxer now, again, that, that the tied in great because, like I say, the question I made, that we had earlier was asking, you know, what kind of training should we do? It depends, right? You know? Now, if, if, if uh, Moses said, well, hey, I, I'm 45 years old, I'm 50 pounds overweight, and I want to lose my gut and build some lean muscle in the process, what would you recommend? Now, I wouldn't recommend explosive speed training, right? Totally different scenario, right? Then we'd customize a different program based on this, this scenario there. But I'm saying that all depends what your goal is and what you're training for. Anyway, back to the questions. Um, I lost my place. Got a lot of questions coming through. It's great. Appreciate the support um, and the interaction. It's always cool. Uh, Omar says, I'm 48. Is coffee good to work out? Yes. I have coffee as a pre-workout a lot of times. I, Yeah, you can definitely have a cup of coffee as a pre-workout. I'm assuming that's what you mean, is coffee good to work out. You have a cup of coffee before you work out. Gives you a bit of a caffeine kick, and yeah, absolutely. A lot, a lot of bodybuilders do that. I would recommend, again, depending on your goal and everything else, probably try to, uh, like, I, I drink black coffee. I like the taste of the bean. <laughs> I've acquired a taste of the bean. Um, so I, I don't add anything, no cream or sugar or whatever. That's what you want to watch out for when it comes to coffee, especially if you start going to like the coffee shops and the Starbucks and you're getting all these frothy latte, blah, blah, blah. Like there's a ton of calories, fat and sugar and God knows what else in those coffees. So, I mean, that's the stuff you want to avoid. But I mean, if, if a good old fashioned cup of black coffee, I mean, Hey, you can't go wrong there. Right. I mean, it's virtually zero calories. I mean, just trace amounts of calories, whatever it would be in, in the, the actual coffee itself. But as, if you have to add anything to it, like look for some low calorie sweeteners like stevia or something like that. Uh, and, and if you do have to add anything in terms of milk or whatever, like look for some, some of the lower fat options. Because again, you can get a lot of extra calories through beverages if you're not careful. Like I, I get a kick out of it. Like my, my neighbor who lives across the street he, he always brags about, oh, I only eat one meal a day. Yet the guy drinks like 10 cups of coffee a day. And in each cup of coffee, he's putting in like three or four spoonfuls of sugar along with cream. And like 
okay, you're only eating one meal a day, but you're getting like over a thousand calories from your coffees in the run of a day when you're adding in the sugar and the cream with, with all of them. So like, but a lot of people don't think liquid calories count and they darn well do count. So, I mean, you know, that, that could be enough for if, if someone's trying to lose fat, for example, like your liquid calories could easily bump you out of a calorie deficit and cause you to gain fat or at least not lose fat. So you want to be careful when it comes to that. We've got Stuart joining in. He's saying, hey, Lee, even though I've been training for five days a week and mixing weights and cardio, not losing any weight, do food, supplements, tablets help you to lose weight? Not necessarily food, supplement, tablets, but your diet certainly does. You can't out-train a poor diet. Like To lose body fat, you have to be in a calorie deficit. Like You, you can't get away from that. So if even though you're working out five days a week, which is great, right? You're doing five days a week, you're doing weight training, you're doing cardio, so you are physically active. But if your calories in match your calories out, you are going to stay plateaued. If your calories in are more than your calories out, you're going to gain weight. If your calories in are less than your calories out, you're going to lose weight. So it's 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 a it's a mathematical formula at that stage of the game. Like, yes, there's more more to it than that. I'm given a very ABC level. Like we can get into nutrient quality and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, how your metabolism is, is affected by different foods like protein and it has a greater thermogenic effect than carbohydrates, which has a greater thermogenic effect than fat and blah, blah, blah. But to keep it like simple, it's calories. Like you're eating too much. That That's you're working out. You're not losing weight. You're eating too much. Simple as that. Right. Now, there's ways of going about it where we can modify your diet so that you actually get more eating satisfaction with less calories. And that's what I really specialize in is helping people to feel full on fewer calories so that they don't feel like they're on a diet. That's like when I'm working with my coaching students, that's what we really focus on is the nutritional habits. And there's all kinds of little things in there that we can make some small tweaks. So it doesn't even feel like you're dieting, but it can make a huge difference. So Stuart, if you would like some help and you'd like to just brainstorm some ideas like how we can tweak that diet of yours and help it to tip the scale in favor of fat loss, feel free to email me. Or if, if you're on Facebook, you can Facebook message me or whatever. But my, my personal email address is leeh at leehayward.com. leeh at leehayward.com. Uh, send me an email. Just say, hey, this is Stuart. I was chatting to you on your video chat. And then, you know, we can have an email conversation. All right. But that, that's that's the reason right there. It, it's it's your diet. It's not supplements, tablets, none of that stuff. It's just you're eating too much. <laughs> Simple answer. Kang Kim Purton says, hello. Hello. Omer saying, how can I become a student? Uh, I'm assuming you mean one of my coaching students. Email me and I'll share the details. Uh, no autographs. Says, hey, dude. Hey, dude. Uh, or, 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 O E R, or, I guess it is. It says, Hi, Lee, I watched your pec strain video. Probably, I probably tear it. When I flex my pecs, there's a noticeable groove in the right pec tendon. It didn't get bruised. I have full range of motion. What would you recommend? Um, sometimes, the, the simple answer, like, you can, you can go get it checked out. Like, go to your doctor and, and get it checked out. The only problem with that is depending on where you live and, and the, the doctor and stuff like you may not get the service you want. Like I remember in the past when I've torn muscles and I go to the doctor, th they kind of brush that stuff off because that's not top priority. And nowadays with the coronavirus, like, oh, this guy has a sore chest, right? Not, not a heart attack chest. Like he has a sore chest muscle. His pec muscle is, is sore. And then you got you know, other people in ICU with, with coronavirus are going to like, okay, who, who's our priority here? The guy who pulled the chest muscle or all these people suffering from coronavirus. So you'll probably get like put on a waiting list. Like you're, you're, you're going to, your priority with going in saying, Hey, my chest is muscle is sore. It's like way down. The doctors really don't give a shit. <laughs> uh, and, and even if things were normal and you go in with muscle tears, like the level of service you sometimes get is crap. Like, I remember back when I tore my bicep, I went to my doctor and I said, look, I, I tore my bicep and this and that. And he said, oh, I can put you on a six-month waiting list to see a specialist. I'm like, what? The, the thing, I mean, it, it it healed up on its own the best it could. But, I mean, obviously, it wasn't, 
a perfect heel. Like my left bicep is shorter than my right now because I had that bicep tear. But I mean, it's, it's still functional, but it's, it's not as strong as it used to be. And it never will be because it didn't heal properly. And that's the thing with your pec. Like if, if you don't get it checked out, I mean, if it's a full on tendon or ligament tear, it may not heal properly. And the fact that there's a noticeable, you know, um, groove or gap or whatever, you may have some tendon or ligament damage done there. I mean, it might not be full on detached. It might be just like a partial tear or whatever. It's, it's really hard to know, but, um, Ideally, check it out with your doctor and see what you can do. Um, it really sucks. It really does. Like, I've known several guys over the years. <coughs> Excuse me. Gesundheit. I've known several guys over the years who've torn their pecs, and, and most of the time, they just kind of have to live with it. Like, you know, there's unless it's a full detached tendon and you can get it surgically operated on and then the doctor's willing to cooperate with you and all that stuff, it, it can be tedious for sure. Um, but yeah, that, that's, if that's what I would recommend, like it, go, go check out with your doctor and, and just see if you can get a second opinion on it, but just kind of giving you a heads up. <laughs> it, it may not, it may not be a good doctor's visit because the, <laughs> they, they don't put big priorities on, on muscles like that, unless it's a full on detachment where you are in real pain. Like, like I've seen guys before who've like torn patella tendons and okay, the, the, they're can't walk. Okay, now they, they give that priority. But if, if you have minor injuries, like, oh, I tore my bicep or I tore my pec, but I can still function and move around and live a normal life, uh, then they don't, uh, they don't prioritize that the same. So they kind of push you down the back burner, put you on the waiting list, if you will, right? Uh, what are your thoughts of... Uh, um, let me start that again. This is from Dario. It says, what are your thoughts on beef as a source of protein? I eat beef on a regular basis. I mean, it's not my staple... Mm -hmm. Uh, but I'll eat it a few times a week for sure. I enjoy it. I mean, I love I love a good steak or I love, to, you know, ground beef and different things that you can do with it. I mean, like the, the other night, we um, my wife makes these homemade meatballs. I mean, I, I really enjoy them. Um, you know, sometimes it's a good steak on the barbecue or whatever. I mean, I, I do enjoy beef as a, a protein source, but it's not my staple. Uh, the only thing I'm not a fan of when it comes to beef is it's harder to digest. So when I eat beef, it's usually for my evening meal because I'm gonna, it's going to sit in your stomach and take longer to digest. Um, food like chicken, fish, eggs, egg whites, dairy products, they tend to be easier to digest. They don't sit on your stomach as, as hard as beef, and beef, beef tends to take longer to break down and digest. That's the only thing. But, I mean, it's still a great quality source of protein. It's high in uh, B vitamins. It's high in iron. I mean, I'm a, definitely a big fan of it. But, like, I wouldn't have beef as, like, a pre-workout meal or something like that because it'll, it takes too long to break down and digest. Uh, Kang Kim. Hello. Can I practice calisthenics? Do you recommend it? Yeah, you can do calisthenics. Calisthenics is just fancy way of saying body weight exercises. I mean, even if I'm going to the gym, I still do body weight exercises, right? Like push-ups, squats, pull-ups, sit-ups, crunches. Like those are all some great body weight exercises. And then you, if you want to get creative, you can do all kinds of different ones. Step-ups and lunges and jumping jacks and blah, blah, blah. I mean, like, yeah, sure. Definitely. Uh, Ricky saying, I'm 40. I didn't know that. I didn't know I, I, I can get bigger i started getting bigger or let me start that again i need i need another sip of my energy drink all right let me try do justice to your question ricky i'm 40 i didn't know i can get bigger i'm starting getting better sleep and now i'm looking bigger how come love your videos i don't know <laughs> You're getting bigger. I, I don't know. You tell me. Is it good big or bad big? Like, most people get bigger as they get over 40, but it's not good big, right? Like, I mean, heck, I mean, I, I know a lot of guys are getting bigger, usually bigger in the belly. Uh, so you're, you're getting bigger. But, I mean, may, are you working out? Are you building muscle? Are you getting stronger? Like, are you eating more? Are you taking some sort of action? That's probably why you're getting bigger. If you're not doing anything, like you're not working out, you're not focusing on your diet or whatever, and you just happen to be getting bigger... And it's probably not good bigger. 
if you're taking proactive measures and meaning you're working out, you're eating better and you're actually trying to build muscle, then yeah, you can, by all means, you can still build muscle in your forties and beyond. I mean, I've got guys in my, in my coaching program who are in, in their sixties and, and building muscle, right? So, I mean, you can still do it. It's just, it's not the same as like a teenager. I mean, obviously like when your body is naturally primed for growth, like throughout your teenage years and even in your early twenties, I mean, you're going to make crazy gains then because your body is primed for growth. Like regardless if you work out or not, like every single teenager on the planet gets bigger throughout their teenage years, whether they lift a weight or not. Like everyone's going to get bigger, add more lean muscle and get stronger as teenagers. It's just un unless they have some sort of growth defects or whatever, but like normal situation, everybody gets bigger. So if you combine strength training, proper nutrition and, and just consistency throughout those teenage years, like you can make some crazy gains. Like I, I'm in my own case, like I'm, I made like my best gains ever throughout my teenage years. Cause I started working out when I was 12 years old. I mean, like I pretty much hit my genetic limit, if you will, in terms of like muscle mass on my frame by the time I was in my, you know, early to mid twenties. I mean, from then on, I kind of like just worked on proportion and definition and stuff like that, but I didn't really get any bigger. Like I was at my best level of muscle mass. And by the time I was in my mid twenties, like, cause just went through that whole teenage good, good decade of, of training while your body's prime for growth. But you, that doesn't mean you can't continue to make progress in your, you know, thirties, forties and beyond, especially if you, if you just started training in your thirties or forties, you can still go through that, uh, you know, the, the newbie gains, as you say, but it's not the same as like newbie gains for a teenager because your body just doesn't have the same level of natural anabolic hormones and it's not prime for growth. You can still make progress, like regardless of age or regardless of your genetics and all that. Progress is always possible. How many grams of protein do you have per meal? You know, that that's a generic question. I can give you the cookie cutter answer, you know, and just say, hey, you have like 40 grams per meal or something like that. But it depends. How big are you? How many meals are you eating? I don't know, what, what's your calorie intake? What's your like it, it depends. I, I will just throw out like a cookie cut, cookie cutter recommendation. One gram of protein per pound of body weight per day. That's that's the general rule of thumb. Divide that between say like four to five meals. Try to space out your protein evenly. Boom. That, that's how many grams per meal. So let's just say you're two hundred or two hundred pounds. You want two hundred grams of protein per day, and you're eating four meals a day. Right? I'm just throwing this out there as an example. Then you would have 50 grams of protein per meal. If you're eating more often than that, then you would break it up. Maybe you like say you're having five meals a day, well, you have 40 grams of protein per meal. On average, like some are going to be bigger, some are going to be smaller, but like that's kind of the ballpark you want to shoot for. If you're smaller than that, let's just say you're you're 150 pounds. And, and you want so you're going to have 150 grams of protein per day, and you would space that out over however many meals you eat. Like that's that's the general rule of thumb. Now you don't have to be like super strict and precise with it. Like some people stress out over it and like, Oh my God, I, I can only eat this much per meal or whatever. Like it's okay to have a bigger meal and a smaller meal or like a bigger meal and a snack or something like that. Like it doesn't have to be everything balanced out. It's the long term average that matters the most. That's what, I, that's what matters. So like if you eat a big dinner and then a small snack and then, you know, a medium sized breakfast and a small lunch or like, it's okay. It's okay. It's the long-term average that makes the biggest difference. So like, don't freak out over like how many grams of protein you're getting per meal. Focus on the long-term average, the daily totals, the weekly totals, the monthly, yearly, like it, it's what you consume over the long term. That's going to make the biggest impact, not the individual days. All right. And just kind of put things in perspective. It's like, let's pretend we were running a business. Like, do we have to turn a profit every single day? Do we have to turn a profit every single hour that we're open for business? No. Like you can have hours where you lose money or you can have days where you lose money. But as long as you, over the long term, you're having more days where you're making money, then you can still have a successful business. The same thing applies with, with your, your fitness goals. Like you don't have to be perfect all the time. Like you can be up and down and have some good days and some bad days. But as long as you have more good days than bad and you're on track most of the time, you can still make progress. So like a lot of people freak out over the details when in the greater scheme of things, it's, it's not really that significant. It's the long-term average, long-term average with your workouts, the long-term average with your nutrition, all that stuff. Is, that's what matters. The day-to-day the -day details, not saying that they don't matter, 
but they don't matter nearly as much as a lot of people think. All right, we have Grim joining in. Says, I have to cook all my own food. A lot of people do. All right, I'm not sure if that was a question, a statement, or what, but he cooks all his own food. Uh, Jesse says, if y'all haven't hit that like button, <laughs> I love it, thanks. Yeah, if y'all haven't hit that like button, smash the like button. Give me a thumbs up, y'all. Where are you from, Jesse? You got to be from down south somewhere. That's one thing I miss. Like, I haven't traveled now since this whole coronavirus hit, but I love it when you travel different places and you just hear the different dialects and stuff. Like, right? You, 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 like, I, this is one thing I noticed a lot of times, man. Like, one of our places that we like to travel, especially in the winter time, is we like to go to Florida. Right, that's a typical Canadian hotspot, right? You know, hey, I'm gonna escape the cold Canadian winter and I'm gonna spend some time in Florida. And by golly, you go to Florida and you walk into a Waffle House, they're all gonna say, How y'all doing? Right? I mean, it's just they, they make you feel welcome, and there's always that y'all like nobody up here says y'all, <laughs> but that's what I love. Down, you must be from down south, you gotta be. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> Uh, Eagle Eye John says, I use a one calorie spray in cooking. Again, I'm not sure if that was a question, a statement, or what, but I will tell you one thing a one calorie spray that take that with a one calorie grain of salt because all these, I'm just going to go off on a little rant here now about sprays. And I'm probably going to clue up the video checks. I actually have a workout I'm going to get going to. But uh, I know we've got a lot of questions here. If you buy those cans of cooking spray, the, the Pam spray or whatever spray, I mean, there's, there's a gazillion brands of them, but like all the cooking sprays. And they'll say like zero calories or one calorie or this and that and the other thing. It's, it's a crock of BS because the can of cooking spray, like heads up, cooking spray is oil. It's just condensed vegetable oil in an aerosol spray can. Oil is fat. Fat has nine calories per gram. We can't escape that. Nine calories per gram. So the, the can says oh, it has zero calories or it has one calorie. It has this calorie. And then you read the serving and the serving is like point, uh, point 0.3 of a second spray. Like you, you can't, who, who has a stopwatch that has like point 0.3 of a second hand on their, their, their watch to even measure like, or, or whatever the number is. Like most people take the can of spray and they go, you know, you, you have several grams of fat right there. Like, and then it's nine calories per gram. This whole spray thing where they say, oh, it's zero calories or it's one calorie or it's this, this and that and the other thing. It's a crock of BS. It's like tr saying sugar has zero sugar in it because I only use one granule of sugar. Or it's like saying salt has zero salt because I only use one granule of salt and it's so small, it's insignificant, Right. Like, no, like these cooking sprays, they're 100% fat and the, the calories are the same as any type of fat, whether it's, you know, whether it's lard or butter or whatever. I mean, fat is fat. You can't get around it. It's just they make these ridiculous serving sizes that are minuscule, microscopic, that are not practical. And then people think it's zero calories or one calorie or whatever, but it's it's not. So that's that's a big uh, food misleading thing that the nutrition uh, and food companies are allowed to get away with, but it's, it's pure BS. Uh, where else we do? Um, spaceship, ba space battleship, Alex saying, I completed your 20 rep squat program a few weeks ago. Since then I've been in a rut. Would you recommend a follow up program? It really depends on what you're in a rut with. Like there's there are different ways to say you're in a rut. You could be in a rut because you are under training. You could be in a rut because you're over training. You could be in a rut because of a lot of things. I mean, your nutrition, your sleep, your stress, your lifestyle. Like there's so many variables that can come into play. It's it's not always your workout. Now, I will say this, like if you follow a particular program and you make some really good progress, like some really fast gains. Those fast gains are not going to just continue nonstop. Like it's it's normal for your body to kind of go through some peaks and valleys, highs and lows. Uh, so this might just be the natural little low after following that that twenty rep squat program. 
I like to give you another analogy to kind of make sense. Like, let's just say you start a fat loss program. Like you, you go from eating whatever the heck you want to all of a sudden you start cleaning up your diet and exercising consistently. People will drop weight rapidly. Like you might drop five plus pounds a week for the first few weeks. Uh, one of my coaching students, Jeff, um, he's been working with me now for the, for six weeks and he's dropped 22 pounds in six weeks. I mean, which is phenomenal. It's great. He feels great and he's looking great. But like I'm giving them the heads up. I say that you're not going to continue. Like in the next six weeks, you're not going to drop another 22 pounds. It's not going to happen. It's going to start to taper off. Same thing with your muscle gains. Like you might see some fast muscle and strength gains if you follow a new program, follow a new diet or whatever. But that, that's because your body adapting to that new stimulation. It's not going to continue on forever. And, and that's what's frustrating a lot of times is, is progress, be it muscle gain or fat loss, it's not linear. It's it's not like we, we, we expect it to be linear, but it's not. Like you just don't make steady progress day after day, week after week, month after month in a linear fashion. You might get a spurt, then you might hit a plateau, and then another spurt, and then the flat line, and then you might even backtrack a little bit, and then another spurt, and it's all over the place. But you need to look at the bigger picture. As long as you continue in the right direction and you're consistent over the long term, you will eventually get to your your goal. It's like I mentioned before, you don't have to be perfect every day, but you got to be perfect most days. And like, like same thing when I said the a business, like a business doesn't have to turn a profit every day, but it has to turn a profit most days. As long as you're moving in the general direction consistently, you will get to your goal, but there's going to be a lot of ups and downs in between. And those ups and downs can really, uh, if, if you don't understand the bigger picture, it can really mess with a lot of people. And they, all of a sudden they start to freak out. Oh my God, I'm not seeing progress. I'm doing something wrong and blah, blah, blah. And if, like, and then it could be just who knows like why you're feeling like you're stuck in a rut. Like, there's, there's oodles of, of reasons. Like you could have your training down pat, you could have your diet down pat, but then if your sleep sucks, that could be the reason, or you could have your training, your diet and your sleep. But if you're under a lot of stress, that could be the reason. I mean, who knows? Like there <laughs> could be even a vitamin deficiency. Like I've, I've had that before. Right. And like, there's so many little variables that could come into play. It's, it's hard to know without really doing a deeper dive into your whole situation. Now, I mean, if, if you want some help with this and you want to do like a deeper dive and like a, a fitness audit, if you will, send me an email. Like we can chat and we can see if we can figure out like why you're stuck in a rut. Uh, but just kind of realize it may be just a temporary thing because you followed a really good program. You made some good gains. It might be just a, the natural low that usually follows a spurt of really good gains. Uh, I wouldn't recommend jumping into another heavy program right away, though, because the 20 rep squat program is a very intense program. I would recommend kind of doing some, something along the lines of more of a maintenance uh, type of program versus trying to back that up with another real heavy power training program. Like this is one of the things that I've, I've done a lot with my coaching students is we alternate training styles. Like so if, if let's just say you, you followed a heavy power training program. We're not going to follow that up with another heavy power training program. Maybe we're going to do more of a conditioning program or more time under tension or or something else, or maybe even a deload or whatever. Like you want to complement the training styles so that it allows your body to work within its own natural recoveries. Like you just can't keep pushing pedal to the metal, pedal to the metal all the time, right? It's going to start to break down. So I've, I like to go like high intensity phases with some lower intensity phases in there, I like kind of alternate it. And that usually works the best for making gains. You just can't keep going pedal to the metal all the time. All right. With all that chitter chatter, I'm going to get ready and clue it up. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to head on over to my Facebook page and get ready and do a workout. So it's going to be a follow along home workout. Uh, I'm going to be doing body weight and resistance band exercises. So this is something that you can do like at home, minimal equipment. So if you're up for a workout... Then you can head on over there. If you're not up for a workout, guess what? That's going to be posted up as a replay afterwards, so you can still check it out later. Uh, but I'm going to go over there and do that now. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video chat. If you did, smash that like button, just like, uh, right? Uh, <laughs> who was it suggested that before? I, I, I miss tracking your name. Shit. It was, who said, y'all hit that like button? Oh, my God. Who was it? Jesse, Jesse, yeah. If y'all haven't hit that like button, give it a thumbs up. It all helps. And uh, I'm going to clue it up. And in the meantime, have yourself a great weekend. And I will talk to you in my next live video chat. Take care. Over and out.